Good evening, Bill. Good evening, Sandy. We're starting later than usual this evening because Bill and I have just spent the past hour talking about things that may be disconnected from our true topic of something of nothing. Is anything really disconnected from the topic of something from nothing? Of course not. So also follows on from what we were talking about last week where we were uh, discussing dark matters, uh, the notion that we can have things that are dark, black, entering into a kind of nothingness. And at the time we did say, well, this week we would tackle the nature of nothing in art, um, which is at once ridiculous and unusual, maybe? What would you say? Um, I stick to my guns when I say that if you're trying to create nothing by adding something, mm. then you're further away from your goal when you're done. Right. And throughout the course of this week, I've thought a lot about that, that your word of being something being additive. Uh, you think something can be subtractive? Many things are subtractive, but it doesn't mean they're nothing. Right. So I was thinking about what um, image or images we could work with this week. And for people watching, maybe, I, you know, I would love to know actually what anyone watching would put as a piece of artwork they think somehow signifies nothing. Signifies nothing. Um, I mean, you said to me at the beginning tonight, like, what are we going to look at? Just a big white screen. And I thought, well, actually, no, but we could talk about the white paintings of Robert Ryman or, you know, it could go sure. back to that, that Gormley uh, interactive installation that I've spoken about before, where you walk into the, the white cube of fog, basically, and you can't see anything. It's just white. Um, but actually, I chose this for us to talk about. And there's only one thing. I'm sure we'll talk about more than this one thing. Solamente one slide. Mm. Pegasus, medium elliptical glass, James Terrell. It's funny, isn't it funny though that when you have a piece of art that in some ways says more in a forward title than it does in its construction? What do you mean, Bill? I just mean that that is, that is more specific information than you get visually. Is it? Do you see an eye in this picture? Mm, I think there's a capacity to see many things. I think the eye, that kind of, <laughs> you know, the, the being at the optician is definitely a thing, isn't it, in this? Yeah, there's like a iris kind of thing going on, yeah. A sense of lens, <laughs> looking. An egg. Mm, an egg. A uh, portal, a doorway. Mm. Yeah, a tunnel, yeah. But why is it why is it nothing? Is it is it nothing? Is it something? I mean, Terrell is uh, basically our a, an artist who works with our quality of perception. Uh, it's light based art. It's installation, sculpture. Um, it can be found in quite unusual locations, really. I think, you know, it doesn't have to be in a gallery. This is in a gallery setting. This is at Pace Gallery, although I'm not sure which Pace Gallery this work was in. Or, uh, I mean, I know he's represented by Pace, but I think as a living artist, he's interesting because he started out, he started out true to his own form already. You know, in the in the sort of late sixties and seventies, he was already um, working at like in the seventies. It was sky spaces, just having open apertures where one could look up or through, and you know they're empty. The thing he yeah. made is empty, and it brings me back to your point about so, you know, can something be? Hey, hold on a second. It's it's empty, but like in some ways he's creating space for you to see something that's behind it. Hmm. 
So, so something, something of nothing. He's <laughs> painting with what is already there, which is the sky in that case. Can there be yeah. nothing in something? And can there, or, and is there always something in nothing? This is what I want us to really look at and talk about. Okay, 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 got it. All right, so here's, here's where we go. First of all, there are very few places and things in the world where there's nothing. So if you have an artist who is starting with anything that currently exists, it's not nothing, it's already something, right? Whether it's a blank page, a blank canvas, even an idea is something. Right. Um, so I think that in some ways, what we're not talking about is nothing. We're talking about very little, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It's sort of, a, um, you know, in, in, in 1972 on the last three trips to the moon, there were cameras on the outside of the command and service module that took pictures of the moon when they were going around the moon mm -hmm. and on the way from the moon back to earth, you're 225,000 or 125,000 miles away from the moon. You're 125,000 miles away from the earth. The command module pilot of each of these flights opened up the hatch, crawled out in a moon suit along the edge to retrieve the film canisters from these things. So he's out there, he's holding onto a, a ladder and he looks up and there's the moon behind him. He looks back behind him and there's the earth. And he looks in any other direction, Sandy, and there is absolutely nothing. And not like, oh, there's nothing for a hundred miles. Like there could be nothing to the edge of the universe in that direction. Would I can just like, imagine. Would you like to be that man, Bill? Uh, I think I think I would psychically crack if that if I experienced that. This is why it's good that we had you know engineers and test pilots doing this because I think your average person put under that situation. If he actually sat there for a second and thought about what he wasn't seeing, would completely lose their mind in a Lovecraftian way. God, and no. so, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think that I think that grounding us back here on the earth and saying something like Terrell or something like the white paintings of artists you mentioned. It's, I wonder if it's less, is the question that they're asking, is the question that the, the artists are posing, is the question, how little can I feed you and your senses that you still think is meaningful? Does that make sense? And I don't mean that as a, as a rip. I just mean that like, it, it wasn't, it's not disparaging comment. It's honestly like, how little do you need as a human to form an idea about something. Well, I also could really have put in work by artists like Agnes Martin here. Sure. Um, we are a lot of very, very careful, very considered repetitive mark making, yet very subtle mark making creates a much larger, I want to say image, but then I enter into a kind of domain where I, I question what image actually is simply that's the problem right surface maybe and i would yep. say, uh if one can if one is lost within the, the meeting of the the piece let's say the image then being lost in an image is there a nothing in that mm. Yes, but it, but if but if every viewer doesn't feel that nothingness, if some viewers feel, I'm sure some viewers sit down in front of Cezanne's card players and feel nothing. So, like you know, I don't mean feel nothing. I mean experience nothing. Experience it, uh, and then of course we pick up part. We say, well, then you're experiencing something because you're experiencing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, but really, what I mean is that like a meditation really you know that's something that is rhythmic maybe yep um, i mean i observe people all the time in the rothko room at tate modern 
uh, this is not about rhythm. This is simply about immersion. I myself have probably been one of the people observed by somebody else being completely taken in to the surface of paint, painting, being, yeah. being lost. Um, the linguistic element of this, again, and as usual for us, is actually very difficult because where we're using our... We're tr yeah, we're, we're using an art of language to try to describe some other sort of art, yeah. Yeah, and also we're trying to use language that positively describes the other art that is maybe or maybe not approaching yeah. nothing, because can something be nothing? Yeah. Um, the reason... I, I, go ahead. Well, to do with our perception and how he as the artist maybe wants us to think or feel through the engagement with his work. Um, I got a quote, I think it's lovely. My work has no object, no image and no focus. What are you looking at? You are looking at you looking. So that very much is something. Even though he's saying it's not, it's actually yeah. very directional. Do you know how much work he makes? Does he make a lot? Over the course of his Or does he come out with like one piece a year kind of thing? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's not prolific in the way that we would say. He's not like churning out thousands of installations, but he has been working steadily for a sure. long time. Um, and like I said, it's almost as if I don't mean his work has never grown, but really from those early days, he's always been interested in uh, light, the materiality of light. Yep. Um, and that as its own currency, you know, I wonder if that's a kind of approximation of nothing. You know, we talked before about dark and black and that, that that very much can be about our feelings about nothing. But where we have, let's say, white or light, do we have the same appreciation of what we think is nothing? So it's as if we kind of have to externalize what we believe nothing to be and we look at it as if it's a distant object. Sure. Yet also we may come up upon and be aware that the nothing is actually us. Can I also point out in this particular image, you could argue that the nothing is the room that this thing is in. Right. So we've got a huge empty space in which we... You can invert the whole thing, yeah. Yeah, in which we must kind of participate in looking. And, and then that also, of course, brings up our ideas again about what it means to participate in any art that we may come across. Right. Can we participate in art about nothing? Now, again, I'm going to come back to the Gormley work that was at the Hayward Gallery where for anybody listening now who didn't hear me speaking before about it, um, one was invited, we were invited as the audience to enter a Perspex cube, large cube occupied really like a room of the large space. It was filled with a dense, odorless, um, like a fog. I, I don't know exactly what the actual <coughs> material substance was but yep. it didn't behave like it would if i was using the fog machines for example it didn't really seem to have different density it was just the same density that the entirety of this space and there were lots of people kind of crammed into this box and even if somebody was right next to you you couldn't see them and i described before there were quite a lot of people who really, really did not want to be in that space, who, who found it overwhelmingly challenging to be in that white nothing. Yeah, if you lose all sense of, it's like you ever go into a, uh, deep into a cavern and they shut the lights off and there's no light. So it's not like your eyes can get used to it because there's a little light. There's no light. Your eyes just never get used to it. You just see sort of like this, 
fuzzy, noisy haze because your eyes are trying to compensate. There's just nothing there to suck up. Um, I don't know if we did touch on this before, but do you find that no light is actually the same as complete light? No. Like is, is, are, is a field of white and a field of black the same thing to me? Yeah. Equivalent rather? Mm. No. Um, I also, you know, you have, you also have the question of, of the shared experience of any kind of, I wonder if, you know, if you take, let's say something really ridiculous, like, I don't know, winged victory or some, some kind of like famous thing that a billion people have seen. Right. And I wonder if there's a larger commonality of experience between the people who look at something like that or Venus de Milo or, you know, apparently I'm at the Louvre right now. So, uh, you know, Mona Lisa, that Just if you- watching, Bill's talking out things here. He's talking about the winged victory of Samothrace, the most beautiful uh, <laughs> sculpture. <laughs> Are, according to some people, yes. Yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, it, if, if you bring in a hundred people in to see that piece from different societies, different ages, different education, you know, if you get a cross section of people and you take them out and then you individually ask them what they thought of it, my guess is that you would probably get fairly similar reactions or within a, within a fairly cohesive, you know, spot on the dartboard as it were. Coming in with something, somebody you bring the same group of people to look at something like this, and I think you'd get a much more disparate spread of reactions to it. So my question is, I might be wrong on that, but let's just say for the moment that I'm right. Um, of course. That I'm right? Of course. Of course, yeah. Um, that is, is there is there a, is there a, success or failure in an experience in the sense that if everyone has a completely different experience, what did you create? Did you create the, 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 the chance for everyone to have a different experience? In which case, did you actually communicate anything at all? Or were you just sort of prompting these people to fall into where their brain was going to go anyway? Does that make sense? Yes, but I want So in some ways, I guess what I'm saying is that you could argue that the nothingness isn't whatever it is the person made, but that the nothingness was sort of the message they were trying to portray through whatever it is they made. And so by not portraying much of anything, everyone has a, this, these disparate experiences and in such a way, it's not the thing that you made was minimal, but the experience you enacted mm. had a minimal message. Minimal. If that makes sense. Nothing of nothing, just to make sure. That well, it's approaching nothing in some sort of mm. tangential calculus way, you know. But also, I have to say again, and, and this is the problem of language, but even when we use words like approaching, you know, can one approach nothing? Um, are you asking a mathematician or are you asking an artist? Uh, I think that, I think you can approach nothing, but I don't think you can ever get there. Which again is why I think minimalism is a cul-de-sac. I think there's neat stuff to see. I think it's fun to ride your bike there and play a base, baseball game. And it might be quiet to live in the cul-de-sac, but ultimately when you're in the cul-de-sac, you're not actually going anywhere. Well, Bill, in your experience of looking at lots of art over many years, have you ever appreciated something to a point at which there's a sense of the sublime? Sure. Very rarely visual art, though. Okay, don't don't be too quick to answer. I really, I'd be interested in you maybe giving an example. Well, see, now you're putting me on the spot. Yeah, uh, we can come back to it once you've thought a bit more about it. 
It's interesting. Most of the time that I find that sort of sublimity, is that a word? Um, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's when I am experiencing something that I have seen or thought about for a long time, but I'm seeing it in person. You know, I felt that way looking at Caravaggio's calling of St. Matthew or Guernica or something like that, where it's like, I know a lot about this piece. I've looked at this piece. I've thought about this piece. And then actually being there, it's almost like I stop even, I stop looking at it and I'm looking through it. Right. Okay. So you stop looking at it. Yes. Looking through it is the phrase you're using. Yes. Mm, is there a collapse? Rather than saying through, could we say there's a collapse of space? Sure. Are we wait? Are we talking like a like a quantum superposition that, that gets collapsed into a yes or a no kind of thing? What are you saying? I'm saying that uh, again. This is about maybe even the language we're using. Again, I come back to this word approaching. So. Um, Something that's representational is quite a good thing to work with on this, really. So let's say we're looking at um, Judith beheading Holofernes mm -hmm. by Caravaggio. And we're standing there. And we've both seen it many times. Many times before at the Uffizi. We've seen it many mm -hmm. times before as reproduction. We've seen it many In times books, sure. on the screen. Uh, and here we are. We're at it again, looking. And suddenly... There is no longer a sense of perception of looking. There may be simply being. Uh, I'm about being too obscure. Is that a good state to be? Is no. that a goal? No, I don't. I think it's goalless. I think if one approaches a painting and thinks, I want to feel nothing, the wanting to <laughs> negates it all. Okay. In some ways, though, are you basically, I feel like what you're describing, though, is the opposite of feeling nothing. It's kind of feeling everything. Is it not the same thing, Bill? Well, you asked me whether black and white are the same thing, and I do not think they are. So I make a distinction between those two. You may see it as both of them are sort of a divide by zero absolute. So it's irrelevant whether you're in one or the other. Both of them are all encompassing. And by definition, all encompassing is all encompassing. Mm. Um, by definition nothing is nothing and yes something, something that is nothing is not nothing but again come back to the question can there be nothing in something somebody somewhere has created something has made something has crafted something is there but in that case isn't, isn't the nothing ended up being inside of you well, then we come back to Terrell and what he was saying. He sure. Said, oh, we're looking, what are we looking at? We're just looking at ourselves looking. Yeah. But isn't that the case for everything? It's just that in, the, in, a, in, a, in a piece like this, there's just no excuse to be actually be looking at anything else. No excuse to be looking at anything else. In the sense that he's, he's, not, he's not saying, oh, yeah, you're looking at this amazing portrait and you're not actually supposed to be seeing the portrait there's more the, th the deeper meaning of it is actually looking past the portrait but the portrait's there mucking things up so i'm just going to remove the portrait entirely and jump straight to the part where you're experiencing nothing and everything all at once but then i wonder are you really experiencing anything at all are you experiencing time passing while you sleep no is time passing? Yes. Is your brain and body doing stuff? Yeah. But you fall asleep and you wake up and maybe you dreamt a little bit. But there's big chunks of that time where nothing happened as far as your consciousness is concerned. That's why I like sleep, especially when I'm depressed. Um, I just want to run at this thing and dive into it. That surprises me actually, because normally you're filled with fear about things that are quite empty. I think True. 
thought you were going to say to me, you want to run at this thing and smash it. No, you know, what's funny though, is that if it was inverted and that was a black thing, like, you know, if somebody was using Vanta black or something to make something, uh, that would freak me out. Apparently I don't mind light, but I'm terrified of darkness. I, I would love to know what why you, that is. Well, why that is, but also I would love to know what you would be like if, if you were at that only installation. I think it would be interesting to see how you reacted to that. That's Depends if I hadn't or had taken my quells before I walked in. <laughs> That's only because I'm your friend and I'm interested in you. I think, you know, I don't really know what the value is in that. Right? In knowing how I would feel that way. Now, in this case, would, would I be completely freestanding or would I be like holding someone's hand? Mm -hmm. Do you think that would make a difference for you? If you were in there and I were in there and instead of, you know, being there alone, your right hand was in my left hand and you and I were like together in a big open white space, would that change the way you experienced it? Yeah, probably. Right. It would depend on how quiet I felt in my, in myself. Sure. At that point. If your if your hand was a bit like sweaty and stinky, I'd be quite distracted. <laughs> right, right, right. No, I get it. But I did. I mean, it does. It does. There. I think you know, we don't like the idea of being alone. Hmm. You don't like the idea of being alone. Well, I mean, ultimately. The, 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 the ultimate extent of being alone is to be dead. I think a lot of people who don't like nothingness are just scared of dying. I'm not going to be good at the end of my life. I'll just tell you that right now. It's not going to be pretty. <laughs> I need to die in a heart attack in the middle of the night while I'm sleeping at 97 years old or something. But do you not have I don't know, a sense that there really is like there's a little a little dying in every day in every way? Oh, sure, that we're just slowly dying from birth? No, I don't even mean that. I mean that What's the I, uh, what's what's, what's the Joni Mitchell line? You and I occupy uh, you and I occupy a world of, of relics. True. Well, our world is a mausoleum, isn't it? Mm, and you think, wait, you think my world is a mausoleum? I think our world, human world. Oh. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think particularly though for artists, there, there's an underpinning sadness about art, making oh. art. So what is the lyric? Something's lost and something's gained in living every day. Is this a um, Mitchell? Yeah. Are you Googling it right now? No, I just wanted to make sure I was right about it. <laughs> Have you seen James Terrell's work at MoMA? Oh, I didn't ask you this before and you didn't answer me. Uh, I I'm sure I have, but I'm not always, I don't catalog artists in my head that way most of the time. In a sense that I wouldn't look at a label and remember the name off offhand. Do you find there's a reverence to this piece? Do you feel a reverence for it? If you could imagine being with it, not just the- Well, there is a little bit of a 2001 element to it, isn't there? Is it religious? I think for people who find religion in the world, this is the kind of iconography that you could clamp onto. Is this iconographic? Yes. How? I mean, look where we started at. We started at, mm -hmm. what is that? That's someone's eye. That is an egg. That's a womb. Mm. That's everything. That's Godhead, you know? Yeah, we're immediately seeking to identify it so we can text yeah in its place 
Well, look at all the meaning that goes along with all of those words, though, you know. Yeah, but uh, again, I'm coming back to it. So, you know, can we look at this without anything else? You think you you think that humans can shut off the pattern recognition in their mind? No, I don't mean shut off, because I don't think there can be an intention to shut off. In the same way that sometimes when people talk about using meditation to conquer things in their lives that are shit, for example, I think uh, this isn't that's not how it works. You know, I mean, meditation is is amazing. That's not yeah. what I mean. I mean, I listen to a lot of angry people talking about using meditation to kind of. I don't know, it, it seems uh, the people I know who, what I think of as properly meditate, uh, who, who probably aren't actively seeking something from it, seem to then be the people who are most powerfully or deeply nourished by it. Wait, the people who are seeking something from it are the most nursed? What are you saying? Well, I think... Um, the more you want from it, the less you're going to get. Yeah, the active state of being sure. that leads to something that is essentially about almost like passivity. Yeah. Well, I mean, isn't that... That goes back to my idea of you want to put work into something that has less to it than when you started is kind of a very difficult way of looking at it. I think the, only, I mean, Terrell made something here and mm. I'm sure it's very refined and very put together. The only way it works is as nothing is by playing into how we see things like this and imagine them as a shaft or a shape or light and dark. These like simplistic notions of the way humans perceive stuff. The reality is, is that this is a ton of work to make something that we perceive is not all that much. Yeah. But I you know what else this reminds me of is the, you know, the, the, um, the meteorite that is attached to the, what is it called? The, the thing in Islam that everyone walks around in Mecca on the outside of it is the black stone. I think it's called or something like that which apparently scientists thinks is a meteorite, but it's like part of the like early Muslim religion was this like rock, but they have it in on the corner of the Kaaba. Is that what it's called? Anyway, the point is, is that the, 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 the meteorites in there, but like the whole, the orifice, the, the aperture that you look at it from is exactly shaped like this. So I also like imagine this as a religious thing, just for those kinds of purposes too. Anyway, do you think we do you think we've gotten anywhere? Or do you think we've gotten nowhere? And are they the same thing? <laughs> oh, how you love to torment me! Mm -hmm. If we were in the playground, yes, you'd be pulling on my pigtails. <laughs> Maybe. Mm -hmm. This is most unsatisfactory, though. <laughs> well, I think that this entire, this topic is never going to be, you're never going to get satisfaction from it. That's the point. Joke. <laughs> Bell. I'd love to meet James Terrell. Where does he live? Mm, I don't know if he lives in Arizona, maybe. I'm going to look him up. All I'm right, going to go hang out with him. You're going to call him. <laughs> I'm going to give him a call. Okay. What's the worst that could happen? I'm going to call him right now. Hold on a second. You get sucked into a vortex of nothing. Imagine if he actually, if I did call and he, he answered. Would you be impressed by that? What do you think? No. <laughs> Ooh, he's cool looking. Bill. All right. I got to meet this guy. Got to make it happen. And with that... We shall see. Goodbye. Thank you, Sandy.